I'm Chris Hawkins, I'm a DJ on BBC Radio 6 Music, and this session is called Can I Speak to the Manager? It's sponsored, very kindly, by Leeds College of Music, and over the course of the next half hour, we'll explore the role of managers in music in the company of Guna Zuchika. Correct. Thank you. And she manages a band that, coincidentally, we've never met before, but I've been playing the band that she represents on Six Music Carnival Youth. And also here, James Plester. James manages an artist called Emma McGann, who happens to be his girlfriend. So we'll explore that relationship between managers who are looking after either friends or, in James's case, partners along the way this morning as well. So I'll set my stall out first. My relationship with band managers is pretty poor, I would say. My personal experience of, of artists and band managers has nearly all been bad, and in some cases, really bad. From money-grabbing managers to poor correspondence, bad, often woeful experiences, and generally incompetence. I hope that might change my perception over the course of the next half hour. First of all, there's Sue Guna. The reason that uh, I perhaps have such a, a poor view of, of management is that actually I'm really one removed from dealing with artists and band managers as a radio DJ. There's usually a, a plugger or a, a PR in between us. But when I have done band nights through the years, put on new bands, my dealings with managers has often been really bad, not least because I often feel like the managers don't necessarily communicate well with their artists or bands. and Maybe that's an experience, but oftentimes I've found that if, if offering a band a, a gig and, and it gets turned down, I know, and in some cases know because I've spoken to the band themselves, <coughs> I've been told, no, that this isn't right for them. What's your relationship like? Let's use Carnival Youth, the youth as, as, as a best example, the, the current band that you manage. What is your relationship with them? Uh, uh, hello, uh, and uh, I really hope to change your uh, change your mind. Uh, not uh, if not f uh, for half an hour, then maybe later on, then we meet at some other events. But uh, my relations with Carnival Youth is more as a aunt because they are 22 year old, and two of them I know since they were born because I manage. I was in the management for. Uh, biggest Latvian local band uh, Brainstorm uh, since I was a teenager and they are sons of the singer of the band. So basically it started only by a singer asking can I give just advice to his kids how to, how to sign to the Copyright Society and they got one deal which was not good in my opinion. And then, just step by step, we started to manage them, and uh, they knew about showcase events. Um, and I, I, uh, I got them to play Great Escape when they were in a high school, last year of the high school. And straight after that, they got a uh, booking agent uh, in the UK, and another one for Germany, Austria, Switzerland. So basically, they've been on the road since uh, high school, which is now four years constantly. And, and uh, I do, I do look after them in a sense that not, right now they are in a six-week tour, which is in Europe, which is longest they ever been. So I'm looking. So there is four days they are playing show. Then there is one one day off, and then now we are deciding to look how many kilometers per day they can drive because as a new band they drive themselves. We have a tour manager, but anyway they are changing. So I. Uh, I've been in a management, uh, as I said, since, since I was a teenager because I started as a music fan in Latvia. And I always seen more caring relations uh, than uh, what you are explaining. But maybe that's because we are smaller market. Well, I think in part it's because you're actually qualified to do the job, aren't you? Uh, I did, I did uh, a course in uh, Westminster University, master degree, some 10 years ago. But it was already when I was in the music industry. For me, it was more or less to step a bit out of it and to look from the other perspective. It's interesting that I'm going to make a comparison with what I do in radio day to day. The, the best producers that I've worked with through the years are the producers 
that didn't want to be DJs, didn't want to be presenters themselves. The worst and hardest producers to work with are the ones that wanted to be behind the mic because you sit with them, you work with them very, very closely and <coughs> you feel, very often you feel judged by, by what you say, by them. So it's interesting, you, you presumably had a, enough of an interest to sort of want to be in a band but you knew that mainly, no, I that can't never, sing. never even. I only, okay. I only been a music fan but I can't sing or play instruments. Okay. And I, all, I just wanted to be maybe closer because I found fan club for the brainstorm when I was a teenager. Right. So it was to be close but never really on stage. The okay. closest I get on stage is <coughs> something like this. So. Well I think that, 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 that qualifies you perfectly as well as that course that you did at uh, Westminster University that, that would have obviously stood you in good stead and, and, and to, to look after young kids really you have a real responsibility don't you? Uh, yes and I know the parents so and they didn't want uh, went to university which is in Latvia is like uh, pretty much everybody after high school go to university and I felt responsibility because there is no reference to Latvian music in Europe in the UK so you you have no uh, Expect, not expectations, you don't know if it will work out as a career internationally because it's not something like maybe Scandinavians do like oh I will be in a music industry and I know it will work and I felt responsibility in front of their parents because they they wanted to go to university but you can't can't do it right now when you are have the aspiration I assume is the same for carnival youth and for any artist or band is to be as successful as possible as a touring band and to sell as many albums as, as possible. It's not easy to achieve that, is it? It's not, but with Carnival Youth, what, uh, especially at the very beginning when we oh. got some first international uh, festivals, uh, because there was such CETA program, part of Eurosonic and part of uh, ETA program, uh, and it gave possibility for Central Eastern European artists to play uh, really big Central Eastern European festivals. And uh, for Carnival Youth, first show was uh, opener in uh, in Poland, which is one of the biggest in uh, in Europe, and uh, and also Ziget Festival in Hungary. And I saw that they sometimes was even more happier about to see all the other bands who are playing. So they they went to the festival not only to their show, but they stayed to see all the bands and, and everything, uh, what happens around. It's really important that I think what you're touching on there is ultimately, you know, it's, it's better than working, isn't it? So you've got to enjoy it. If you're going to choose to be a musician and, and, and pursue a career in music, then it's always going to be better than a real job. So it's important to enjoy it along the way as well. James, slightly different relationship for you as, as the manager of, of your girlfriend. How did that? How did the relationship start? So uh, I, I work as a I work as a music producer as well, okay. and so we met in the studio, um, and I originally started working on some of the material. Anyway, um, we ended up getting together later on down the line, and we it, it seemed like a good fit for me to do the manager role uh, of what we were doing with Emma um, because we. I don't have a best interest at heart, of course, um, and I think that's the thing for a manager. Uh, yep. There is those times where you have to know when to cut off the work relationship. Yeah, how do you do that then? Um, it's very tough, I'll be honest with you, because we both live it 24 hours. Yeah. So we ha we just have times when we just go, well, we just have to chill out now and just stop and then carry on. Um, and because we're always working pretty much all the time, that's what it's like. Um, it is very, very difficult, but we've managed to make it work so far. So Let's get a sense of perspective. Where's she at, Emma, at the moment? So we've got a very different path. So Emma is, um, we do online, so we make uh, money via Emma by non-traditional means. So with Emma, we, we, we try doing the original touring, you know, we try doing school tours. We do like commercial pop. Um, we did school tours and we did like two months on the road, you know, sleeping in a van as cheap as we could do it and basically broke even and I was like, this is so much work. And then we discovered live streaming. In one live stream, we actually had more interaction from like three days of touring, from like social interaction from, from fans online. And we were like, this is, this is crazy, we don't have to go anywhere and it's free to do it. And so we kept pursuing it and um, everyone at the time on live streaming was on, in their bedrooms on the phone. And so I was like, right, we're going full production. And we set up a studio, it looks really good, you know, good lighting, good sound. And from there, Emma started getting noticed on the platform because of the people weren't. And it got to a point where she built this online following 
really like quite a big eye following it. Yeah, let, let's explore that a, a little further because obviously the music world has changed immeasurably. Where really there's very little money to be made, if any, out of selling physical albums. So it's a new world where I think it's extraordinary. It's a bit like I think an actor being told from now on. You're not going to get paid for any of your TV or, or film work. It'll just be theatre. And, and the same is sort of true for the music industry now, where musicians are only able to really make actual hard cash out of playing live and building that big fan base and playing bigger and bigger venues. But there is the streaming world. So it's worked for you, James, and it, it is continuing to work. But how do you spread the word? Because there's so much competition online. So for us, it's just about making Emma stand out over everyone else. So like I said, when we first started doing that full production, really made her stand out that site over everyone else in the bedroom yeah, it, of the, the low production it, Interesting, isn't it? Because there was a period in time where the iPhone quality was in vogue, where it was the, the kind of crap quality had some sort of appeal. But I think we've moved beyond that now yeah. already. And, and that better, high quality production is what is, it's more it's pleasing on the eye and the body ear, clearly, to get as well. But, but what we found was we, would, we, we tried, you know, releasing as, as, you know, as everyone knows, you release your record and you have lots of people buy it. And uh, we really struggled with it. And what we've kind of done is we've got a fan base, so not, the word isn't conditioned, it's like who are used to now paying every day. So instead of doing a release and, you know, spending, say, you spend three months doing a release and then doing the music video and all those costs and then you hope you can create that back. Um, now, every day, we do live streams and the fans will pay every day. The content is free, but people pay because they want to, they can tip. And so, you have these fans who are so dedicated, who actually tip every single day. What, what makes them keep coming back? It, you presumably don't change the studio and set every, every time you do a stream. I think it's the personality of Emma coming across talking. See, when I talk to fans about live streaming, a lot of people use <laughs> They go, oh, I'll just, I'll just live through my rehearsal, that would be cool. But people don't care about that. What they want is to talk to you. And so Emma will say have two, three hundred people in the broadcast, but her, someone asking her a question, and that three seconds of her answering back, they feel like a personal connection. And so at the moment, she can almost have a personal connection with every fan over that period of time. And if you do multiple live streams, and the other thing is, the thing about live streaming is you build an audience worldwide. So we do different live streams throughout the day, different time zones, so we know we're in. Yeah. different markets. Really interesting. It's, it's very different uh, and we, we kind of did it when, when before we weren't even making money at first when we did it we were just using it to build the audience and then the company kind of said oh um, we're thinking of adding monetization do you want to be one of the first people to try and we were like yeah we did it in our first month we made like two thousand pounds. What do you mean what, who, who, who said that to you? Um, so the company that we live streamed with that company called You Now. Do, uh, we all, do you know uh, you, you Now? now? Is that it's new to me. So it's, um, it's a US predominantly, well, I'd say it's kind of 40 to 50% US audience, uh, quite a lot of Germany and the UK as well. Um, and so they're, they're based in New York. So they're a US based company, and we kind of heard it for a friend and tried it out. But the thing was, we were at the point where we were trying to get people to listen to the music and struggling. And then suddenly we went on this platform and people wanted to listen. It's, uh, I think this is a really fascinating, two very different routes. Uh, Guna, you, you talked about the showcases, and, and I think. Uh, that, that's been amazing clearly for Carnival Youth because it's put them in the spotlight and, and put them in front of all of the right people. We are quite short of time because the previous session overran. So let's get to the point. What about, what about artists who don't have the, the, the privilege of, of working with a manager who, who had the foresight to, to, to qualify, if you like, and go down the road of, of showcasing? What about playing open mic nights, building up, playing gigs locally and building a fan base that way? Uh, definitely, but at some point you really need somebody, somebody behind because uh, I've been to many also the same showcase events where artists go without manager and uh, you can see that all the industry are a bit, they don't talk directly with an artist. So, but uh, of course when you start, it's where, wherever you start, uh, you start with, uh, without anyone. And in Latvia there is many bands who one of the band members will be at the beginning as, uh, you know, dealing accountancy or, uh, or doing some uh, more PR things and everything. So at some point you will need to build the teams around. And also with Carnival Youth we are working in a way that in each territory we work, we have somebody to do PR or somebody who does local things. Yes, because it's, it's expensive though what you're talking about. Yes it is and we don't have uh, record labels 
local record labels who would invest in the band. So you have to be creative and uh, sometimes being one of the few or maybe the only one to do from Latvia it has its own advantages as well. So you can go to local beverage company Riga Black Balsam and say, hey, I know you are trying to get to new markets. And they, they help us financially. And then uh, Riga Li uh, Live Riga, which is marketing company for, for uh, the capital of Latvia, they have been supported us. And so you just creatively go around and figure it out because if it works, yeah. you will find it. You, you need a confidence, don't you, to, to be a manager, James? I think you, you, you need to know that you're making the right decision. It won't always be the right decision, but you've got to be firm. There has to be a line between the artist or, or band and the manager, doesn't they? Definitely. Uh, I would say, though, I'd say it's so much trial and error, especially the route we've taken. Um, we've done some things that have been really successful, but I've done a lot of things that just haven't worked. Yeah. And I think you just have to be firm and believe that what you're doing is going to work. The key is making mistakes that aren't expensive. Exactly. Because, That's yeah. the one. Yeah. yeah. What's, uh, what's your best advice, James, first? Your best advice for any new manager? Um, I would say just to really think outside the box and like one of the first things we did when um, when we were pushing Emma's first single was we had a, such a tiny marketing budget at £150 and I was like how am I going to get the most out of this and I ended up looking at, at the time at YouTube and finding a bit of a thing about this guy posting all the top 40 tracks of the month and he was getting millions of views but he wasn't making any money because of people's songs so I messaged him, it's a 15 year old kid from Canada and I said look, I'll give you 150 quid to put my track in between on the next one I think got 4 million views in a week wow. and that was, you're never going to get that kind of especially at the start, those kind of things for that money because you know, with success you know, comes an income which you can then use to try yes. more things but at the start you just need to be creative and really think outside the box yeah, what about you, Guna? Best yeah, advice? I totally agree, and uh, as, as I said, I come from Latvia where it isn't as structured music industry as it's in the Western countries, so we've been creative since, uh, since uh, basically today is a big thing because it's a, a rare independence day of Latvia, so we've been independent 28 years from the uh, after. Thank you. So basically all those 28 years we have to be creative because we didn't have these structures that help us. <coughs> But for the managers, I think that you really have to want to do it because it's not going to be easy. And it's uh, when I started, I learned everything by doing and by researching and looking to what the bands I like does from the not musical point of view, but from the management or marketing. You really have to do it, uh, you have to love it and you have to be curious because it changes so quickly that you have to all the time be, and be at such events and network. Yeah, and you, you can be nice with it, can't you? Clearly. It's working for you, but I think so. Yeah. All right, okay. guys, we're right out of time already. The, the guys, Guna and James, will both be available for questions somewhere at some point today. For now. Sorry? Oh, right outside, here on the side, and I, I think you now is going to be something really interesting to explore, and also talking to Guna more about how you get those showcases, how you get on the bill at these, these big events. For now, thank you very much for being here. Have a brilliant sound city.